and today I want to talk to you guys about why Pick AUR is the best AUR helper available for Artonix. So the AUR helper is a very import, important part of a Arch user experience because the AUR helper allows you to install packages from the AUR, the Arch user repository. And basically with that power, you can install pretty much any package on the planet really because anybody can go there and write the build scripts known as PKG builds to the AUR and anybody can go and install a package. There are a couple of other AUR helpers that are available on Arch Linux such as Yay, Paru, and Pomok. Um, some of them are pretty good, like they're decent, you know, you can survive with them, but they have a few problems. Some of them had problems in the past. For example, Ye was forked into Paru because they hadn't updated Ye for a while, is what I heard. And so, um, that happened. And also, um, sometimes when you're installing AUR packages with Ye or Paru, you'll have to answer questions throughout the installation. And so that's pretty troublesome. And so, I have this list here in a Vim buffer, and I want to go through the what makes Pick AUR the best AUR helper. The first reason is that it's regularly updated, and so I just talked about how uh, Ye was forked into Paru because it hadn't been updated in a while apparently, but this is still regularly updated. We can see that um, there was just a commit about 12 hours ago, and so that's pretty recent. Uh, the second reason is it asks all the questions first and starts building and installing packages and do not ask the questions again. Of course, the, I also mentioned about Paru and Ye, how they would oftentimes ask questions while the installation was running. So let's say you had to build something big like, um, I don't know, on Google Chromium, and the install fails and you come back and you like came back maybe you went for like a coffee or something because you knew that on Google Chromium would take a while to compile and then you come back and there's an error you know you're gonna be pretty ticked but um or not an error but it's trying to ask a question and that sucks okay like that's pretty annoying and although you can continue the installation you know it would be much better if it automatically knew what the answer to that question was. And so that's a special thing about Pick AUR is that it knows what questions will be asked and it asks them first and then it will respond to those questions later in installation, which is pretty useful. So some uh, examples of that, let's say that like there might be some conflicts between packages, it'll ask those questions first. So for example, like the development build of some package might conflict with another factor. For example, pick AUR, there's two packages in the AUR that are pick AUR. There's pick AUR and there's also pick AUR AU, uh, git, which basically pick AUR git is the one that pulls straight from the repository, the GitHub repository, which I honestly don't recommend doing, but you know, some people do that. I don't know, but the regular pick AUR our package will just grab the release, which is like, I, that's what I like to do. I don't want to get a development release for my package manager. Next is what I call a Hail Mary search, select, and install package. So basically, if you give pick AUR no arguments, just package names, it will um, sort of give you a list. It'll search for packages in the AUR and repository. So for example, here I did pick AUR Zerithum, and it gave me four options that it found. And so I selected two, and then it got ready, and then it showed me the dependencies and what uh, AUR package will be installed, and the dependency that will be installed from the AUR. And then it will go through the entire installation. The next cool thing is that the package build and installation is very strategic. So um, when it's when packages are built, being built, they have the build. Um, they have the build dependencies installed before, I'm going to try and explain this very simply. So like let's say you're trying to install package A and package A has two different dependencies and package B has two different 
dependencies that are completely different from package A and you're both trying to install package A and package B at the same time, while package A is building, it will only have the pa dependencies of package A installed at that time, and then once that package is built, it'll uninstall those uh, build dependencies, and then the second package built. And once both packages are built, it will install it all last. And so I think that's strategically okay. You know, just in case there's any conflicts, it'll be less likely to happen. And also, I tried to get an error. Maybe the thing that I'm trying to run over here got an error, I'm not sure. No, it didn't get an error. If you have an error, actually there's screenshots over here I can show you what a uh, error might look like. So basically, let's say something fails, you've got like this list of options that you can do. Like this is for something like uh, cloning the actual repo from the AUR. But let's say something goes wrong during the build of a package, like, I don't know, you run out of memory or something and so you're compiling a big package and so that breaks the compiler. And so basically what you can do, you have a couple of options. You can retry the build, you can erase the build directory and try again, you can script, skip the package, or you can abort. It's super easy to recover from builds, uh, build errors with PickAUR. It, and so it also has Gen2 like Arts Linux News Viewer inside of it. So if you've ever used Gen2, you might know about the the news system inside. So like, let's say there's some news that everybody needs to know, the Gen2 developers will push it out and you can be able to like read the news with that one command I can't remember right now. Basically, whenever the Arch Linux team has an announcement with, so you can see here in the Arch Linux page, you have this latest news. So whenever you do a full system upgrade, it will tell you whatever news is new. Okay, so another cool feature is that you have autocomplete with your shell. So you may know that you have autocomplete if you type, start typing in a command in your shell and you want to hit tab. And so you'll sort of have your options and you can basically autocomplete your options. So let's say I want to do document. I want to specify the one documents. It just helps and saves a couple keystrokes. And with pick AUR, I can start typing in a package. So let's say, I don't know what's a package. Libre Wolf. As you can see, we can see some packages that are from the AUR that are Libre have Libre Wolf in the name. So we have Libre Wolf, we have Libre Wolf bin, and some extensions. And so that's super useful if you're looking for a specific package. You're not sure of the name, so you don't have to you know search for it with pick AUR search and the Libre Wolf, and then you have to go and then man type in type it again and so another cool feature of pick AUR is the pkg build management and so i can show you up here so up here when i was trying to install zrhythm you can see that it wanted to ask the if i wanted to edit the pkg build for all of these aur packages if i said no it would just it would ask me next time that the packages was inst the package was installed but if I said yes, then it would let me edit it with Vim or whatever my default text editor was. And it would recalculate the dependencies and whatever it needed to do. And you can see here that there's this warning that it's not going to show me a diff of the PKG build because it's installing for the first time. But let's say that I already approved the PKG build for, let's say, Zerhythm. Whenever I went to full upgrade and Zerhythm had a new PKG build, and so that's like a new version, it would actually show me the diffs or the differences between the new and the old PKG build. So they have a screenshot of this over in the GitHub page or the GitHub repository. So you can see here that this person is trying to install OTF IVM Plex, which is a font. I think it's a family font. And so as you can see, it shows the differences between the old PKG build and the new one. So you see the minus signs and red parks are the removals and the plus signs and the green marks are additions. So you can see they changed the, in the PKG build script, they changed the version from 0.5.4 to 1.0.1 and the package variant from what, 2 to 1. And then you can see that they changed the location of where the 
font was actually located and the checksums so that you know if they kept the old if if they check if they kept the old checksum then it would just fail to build because they wouldn't it, you wouldn't have the same checksum with a different file here in the packaging script they changed it so where it was, was going to go into type and then package ver whatever the package ver is into um, plex instead package ver and so all of this stuff that is I think it's the license. So yeah, that's why I think Picky AUR is the best AUR helper. Got some allergies, and my brain is kind of lagging today. So I hope this video is good. I hope you learned something. Honestly, I think Pick AUR is the best AUR helper. I did try and install the rhythm because I thought it was give me that it would give me an error because normally this one always seems to fail because the the rhythm devs like to provide the source and not make it easy to install their application but hey i guess it's an improvement so alrighty see you guys